Hi everyone, Emery Parsons from PDMG here. Today I'm going to be talking with you all about shipping settings automation on Amazon, um, how it works, how you can use it to your advantage, different things to watch out for when using the settings, um, what it works for, all sorts of different things. Okay, so let's get started. Let's just quickly um, cover what is shipping settings automation or SSA. SSA is a feature or setting that can be enabled in Amazon, and it's designed to help sellers create shipping templates quickly and um, with accurate delivery regions and transit times to each region in those shipping templates. Uh, Amazon automatically will calculate these transit times for you, and they'll automatically refresh data to reflect the latest delivery speed of shipping services. So what this does is it essentially eliminates the need to manually maintain your shipping templates with accurate information. Okay, so next, you know, what can I use SSA for? What does it support? So SSA supports uh, transit time automation for domestic self-fulfilled standard shipping. So if that's you, you can use SSA. Um, it also supports shipping region automation for domestic self-fulfilled one and two day deliveries. Um, so just a faster delivery than this first one right here. And then third, uh, shipping region automation for domestic seller fulfilled prime one and two day delivery. And this is particularly important here. It's important to use um, SSA here because to remain in the seller fulfilled prime program, you need to hit the required delivery speed targets. So you can use these settings um, in seller fulfilled prime to help you do that. Okay, so the benefits of SSA, as you may know, it can take a significant amount of time for sellers to do all of the complex calculations and track the delivery report performance that's all required to provide accurate delivery promises to customers. So by using SSA, you can simply tell Amazon where you ship from, what shipping service you use, and then Amazon will do the calculations for you based on the most recent data. What Amazon is trying to do here is eliminate unnecessary, unnecessarily long delivery promises as customers like products that ship quickly. And these calculations are particularly important when shipping Seller Fulfill Prime, as I mentioned above, because Seller Fulfill Prime has very strict requirements for shipping speeds. So, like I said, you can, you know, try to use these settings to your advantage to save time, ship accurately, um, and show an accurate delivery promise, and then therefore, you know, hopefully hit your delivery speed targets. Another benefit is that more accurate and faster delivery promises to customers will give your product a better chance to win the buy box, so it can definitely help you compete. Next is that you no longer need to manually estimate your transit times, and then again, hopefully eliminate the need to overestimate your delivery promises if you are you know, trying to play it safe and give yourself extra time. Um, Overestimate just means your delivery promise to the customer is longer than what the product actually takes to get there. And so you don't have to manually do this anymore and sort of guesstimate. Uh, last benefit is these settings are really designed to be like a management tool for transit time. Uh, and your delivery promise to customers will likely be more accurate with these settings than with trying to do manual estimates. Okay, scrolling on down here, is there anything required of me to use SSA? So you must use the shipping services that you select in your settings for this to work and make sure that you uh, select the correct shipping service from the start. Or you can use buy shipping to select any service that you know meets customer promises and Amazon would show you that. And Amazon will monitor your delivery performance and may add time to your delivery promise that the customer sees if you're not meeting those requirements. Exactly how does Amazon automate shipping regions? So shipping regions, prime and non-prime, are auto-calculated based on where a shipment can reach 
within one and two days. And this is, again, based on your shipping settings preferences. Uh, these preferences that you would have selected would include your ship from location, the shipping service you chose, the delivery zone limits, that would apply for Prime. But keep in mind that Amazon is always trying to have the largest amount of coverage of possible on-time delivery. So Amazon may adjust your shipping regions over time in order to provide the largest amount of coverage possible. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so here are the steps to enable shipping settings automation on the left if you're uh, self-fulfilled products, on the right if you're seller-fulfilled prime products. Um, so for both, you're gonna go to your shipping settings, go to the shipping template, and you'll either create a new template if you would like to do that, or upgrade an existing one, whatever you choose, and then you can enable uh, shipping settings automation from there, enter your ship from location. And then the difference here is just for self-fulfilled, you'll wanna select, I wanna automate self-fulfilled. And over here for Seller Fulfilled Prime, you would just select Seller Fulfilled Prime. Okay, so let's jump back over here to the self-fulfilled products. Okay, so to enable transit time automation for standard shipping, or over here, um, you want to perform these steps right here on your SSA preferences page. So select the carriers, select the shipping service, and then uh, manage your regions and you'll go into region preferences to do this. Scrolling on down uh, to enable shipping region automation for non-prime one day delivery and two day delivery. If you are doing this, you may or may not be. Same thing, select the carriers and the shipping services uh, in your carrier preferences. And then you just wanna review everything, uh, edit your fees if needed, and then don't forget important last step, just assign the uh, SKUs that you want to the shipping template. Okay, so let's pop over here to the Seller Fulfilled Prime. So we kind of went Arduin over this because it's sort of the same for both um, Self Fulfilled and Seller Fulfilled Prime. But once you've selected, I want to automate Seller Fulfilled Prime, my I want to automate my Seller Fulfilled Prime shipping settings, you will select the carrier and the shipping services for Prime two day and one day delivery because that's what Seller Fulfilled Prime is. Um, based on the shipping services coverage, but they say that one day delivery is optional. And then you're gonna select your delivery zone limit if applicable, review your settings, edit the fees, and then don't forget to assign your prime SKUs to the prime shipping template. Okay, let's go on down here. So these are just kind of some important tips to keep in mind when you're setting up SSA, when you're using it, um, when you're seeing how it works. So just be very careful. Um, number one here, when you're choosing your handling time, make sure that it's accurate. Um, inputting too short of a handling time may end up showing a faster delivery date to customers, but if you're not able to hit that faster delivery date, then your delivery speed metrics would be uh, affected. So it's a good idea to maybe stay on the safe side and just make sure that you put in a handling time that you're 100% confident that you can achieve. Okay, next in your settings, you can select up to 10 ship from locations and your shipping regions will show a sum of all the regions your shipping services can deliver to from each ship from location. So just keep that in mind. Next is just make sure that you select the appropriate shipping service like UPS, for example, for each way that you ship. So if you do, you know, let's say a mixture of seller fulfilled prime orders and maybe you also do self-fulfilled premium shipping, just make sure you get the right shipping service for each. You know, you might be doing UPS for one and FedEx for other, just make sure it's all correct. Next, if you're just using um, self-fulfilled standard shipping, Amazon will automatically choose the shipping service, again, like UPS, with the longest, longest transit time to avoid increasing your shipping costs. So for example, three to five days for a transit time would be chosen over two to four. And so they're just trying to keep costs down here. 
Next is don't forget about your delivery zone limits. Um, this would apply for a seller for full prime, but you can control your shipping cost by limiting the regions or you can use uh, Amazon's default value, but just don't forget about those delivery zone limits. Okay, next, you might see that your prime coverage is smaller than usual when you enable shipping settings automation. And this might be because Amazon can only label a region as prime when they can ship on time to every single zip code in that region. And regions do have the potential to be upgraded over time when shipping improves. Um, and if that does happen, Amazon would create a new version of your shipping template. Uh, coverage is calculated by the percentage of the U.S. population that's within the prime or non-prime premium shipping regions uh, covered by your chosen shipping services. So just keep that in mind. If your coverage is smaller, it's because of um, Amazon only labeling regions as prime that they can cover every zip code in that region on time. Okay, so let's go on down here um, and just talk about some feedback, different things um, that we've noticed that sellers are saying about shipping settings automation, um, just because when there's new things to Amazon, it's just a good idea to be on the lookout for um, any potential difficulties. So let's go through a couple of these. Okay, so, um, you know, some people have said, oh, not all of the carriers are showing up as a shipping option. Um, this might be because Amazon is only showing carriers that can ship at a certain speed. This could potentially be an issue if you need to use a specific carrier for a specific reason. The reasons might vary, um, but we could see that maybe as a potential problem. Um, but what Amazon is trying to do is to show carriers that can ship at certain speeds. Okay, next, um, some sellers have said they noticed um, limits to the shipping day options, uh, like same day delivery shows, but next day delivery does not. Um, I see an issue with this as customers could end up being shown that one to two day delivery, but then if sellers can't actually select that when they're shipping, uh, it could throw off delivery speed metrics. So I would definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, other sellers have noted some trouble selecting by shipping in their settings. We talked about this above. Um, by shipping allows you to choose any service that meets customer promises. And so some people have said, oh, we can't select that. Um, a good idea here is to just check that you purchased your shipping label on time and before the pickup time and check that you selected, uh, you know, the right shipping location that's already in your settings. If you are still having trouble, um, you can just buy your shipping label without buy shipping, without using the services, even though that's not really ideal, but just make sure that you select a carrier that's gonna be able to deliver on time. Um, any customer orders that like go through in this case should not count towards your buy shipping metrics. But if they show up anyway, for some reason, you should definitely contact Amazon. Okay, going on down here. Um, some people said shipping templates didn't include options for Alaska and Hawaii, but they weren't able to add a new rule for those states. Um, and some sellers just felt that the delivery promises estimated by Amazon weren't accurate, or they felt that the delivery dates that are supposed to be automatically updated based on carrier performance weren't being automatically updated. And then lastly, like some sellers felt like or feel like they are just giving Amazon too much control by enabling SSA and they just prefer to manage it themselves. So those are kind of like, you know, it's up to you and your business what you feel like you want to do. Um, but let's talk about Seller Fulfill Prime specifically really quickly as it relates to SSA. So um, you may know, or if you use Seller Fulfill Prime, you probably know that the requirements uh, to remain in the program are can be difficult for sellers to maintain. The rules are very strict. And if you're having trouble hitting your delivery speed targets, which is one of the requirements to be in the program, you know, the settings may be good to try and see if things improve. But on the other side of things, if you have really strong success with Seller Fulfill Prime and you have a good system going, you may want to stick with what works and not turn on SSA 
Uh, like I said, it's really up to you and what makes the most sense for your business. If you do decide to test out SSA, I would just keep a really close eye on how the settings correlate to your shipping performance. Uh, did your shipping performance improve or decline? And from there, you could sort of do an evaluation and decide, you know, does it make sense for me to continue using SSA here? Okay, so I think that about covers it. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, let us know. I'll include some links uh, down in the bottom to our blog post about this where you can download this PDF uh, and to our LinkedIn. And also be sure to check out, uh, we have some other videos that are uh, really specific to Seller for Full Prime. So if you're interested in that, go check those out. Thanks for watching.